Thank you. Um, so now we're going to go from the universe down to our planet and talk about the Earth's climate system and what that um, means to all of us. Um, now, first of all, maybe I ought to explain what climate is. Climate is not the weather you see today or yesterday or when it was real cold last week or we, when we have a, a, you know, a, a single snowstorm, but it is the uh, long-term, we usually talk about 30 years, mean and variance in the weather system. And actually, although I won't have time to talk about that in detail, we actually can do a, a, a much easier job of projecting what the future may hold for, in that direct, for that, than we can predicting what the weather is going to be three days from now. And there's various reasons for that. Um, problem is, as we talk about climate, that the public in the United States is very confused. There's lots of misinformation out there, constant stream of books, newspaper articles that try to show both sides. Um, the, um, a number of blogs, uh, et cetera, that imply either that this issue is not understood, that you know, are humans driving uh, a change in our climate system or not, or that it may be even be a hoax if you listen to someone like Senator Imhoff from uh, Oklahoma. I'm going to tell you the understanding of the science today. Now, if we look at uh, some of the, uh, uh, the things that are out there, you know, as I mentioned, there's, there's many, many blogs. This is just an ad from the uh, Heartland Institute in Chicago, which puts out some of this misinformation about the climate system. Uh, I like this ad because it first of all says, um, that global warming, which is the media term for, for climate change, and it's actually much more complicated than just the, the planet warming, um, is, uh, first of all, that it's not man-made, and they have their various reasons. And, but just to play it safe, they also say, oh, even if it is, it's not harmful. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, and, and they have their reasons for that, which don't amount to much either. Uh, there's various other analyses available through the web, through, certainly through the science community. We do assessments of, of the climate system on a regular basis. Um, and this is just, just one of the, the blogs that's out there, Skeptical Science, where scientists contribute information about why what the denialists of, of climate change are saying. Um, we don't want to call them skeptics, all oh, good scientists are skeptics. I actually tend to call them confusionists because I think that's their real job. Um, and, the, uh, and, and so they try to respond, you know, and, and I'll go through some of these as, as we go through the talk. Now, the clear message from the science community, and when I say this, I feel like uh, the Verizon commercials where the guy pulls out his cell phone and there's suddenly thousands of people behind him. In my case, those thousands of people are the science, scientists in the science community. And I'll say why in a second. But the science is actually quite clear. Climate change is one of the most important issues facing humanity. The scientific evidence clearly indicates that our climate is changing, the Earth's climate is changing, and that the reason for, the, the primary reason for those changes is because of human activities. What I'm going to do today is go through some of the evidence for that. Now, part of the basis for this is there's been various analysis now showing that 97 to 98 per percent of the scientists who study this issue and if you look at the peer-reviewed literature and peer in the peer review process of, of how we publish papers in science and the self-correcting nature of that is extremely important to making sure that what is we discuss is, is really right, and we keep science progressing, um, all indicate that this is a very important issue. Every major national and international professional scientific society, you can pick whichever one you want to talk about, has put out a very strong statement about the importance of this issue. Every National Academy of Sciences in the world have put out strong statements about this issue. And as just an example of that, last year, uh, May, uh, 
Um, well, it's, it's a little over a year you know, now, a year, a year and a half ago. Um, the, uh, G8, the National Academy of Sciences from the, from the G8 countries, which of course all the major economic nations in the world, plus five other major countries, um, India, et cetera, put out a very strong statement. And right at the beginning of that statement, it said, the need for urgent action to address climate change is now indisputable. And despite that, you still see all this misinformation in the media. Now, let's actually go look at the scientific understanding. This is the temperature record we have since, since we really got good global measurements of, of the temperature system over the last um, 150 years or so. Uh, there's three different major groups worldwide who, who do this uh, analysis. There's actually a fourth, uh, the Japanese, but I don't have their data, even though it looks very, sim very similar to these. You'll see very slight differences between the analysis by uh, NASA, by NOAA, the NOAA uh, Climate Data Center in, in Asheville, North Carolina, and the Hadley Center, which is labeled here as Hadley Crew. Hadley Center is in the UK, and it's their meteorological um, um, office in, in, in the UK, United Kingdom. And if you look at this carefully, you would see from about 1900 to, there was very little going on before about 1900. 1900 to 1940, there's an increase in temperature uh, occurring globally. Uh, we think most of that is natural. I'll show you an example of that later. Um, from about 1940 to about 1965 or so, there was a slight decrease uh, in temperature. We think there are several factors. One is some natural cycles in, in the ocean, uh, but the other major factor there is uh, human activities, production, the production of coal burning power plants, putting sulfur, not only putting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that we'll talk more about later, but also putting sulfur into the atmosphere. That sulfur turns into sulfuric aerosols that reflect sunlight, and in the process, they have a cooling effect. Those are very dominant during that period until the amount of carbon dioxide and other so-called greenhouse gases increased enough in the atmosphere that they just took over. And if we look at the periods from about the late 1960s till now, we've seen an overwhelming increase in temperature. And I'll be talking more about that later as to why we think that that change over the last 40 plus years is really related to human activities. Now, that slide, previous slide just included up to 2009. This one adds 2010 from all three locations. Basically what they find is that 2010 was tied as the warmest year ever with 2005, or with, in the case of the Hadley Center, with, with 2008, I mean, with 1998, um, because of slight differences in the analysis. Now, we could look at the details of this, I don't have time to discuss those, but, but basically, this, this warming is continuing. We don't expect every year to warm. We can have a decade where things don't really change all that much. We have other factors that I'll talk about, such as uh, the period right after 1991 when there was actually a slight decrease, which we think was, um, it's not just we think, we have strong indications it was due to the Mount Pinatubo volcanic eruption, which also puts sulfur into the atmosphere and causes a cooling effect for a couple of years until that sulfur gets washed out. Only happens with very large eruptions because it's got to, you got to, uh, be explosive enough to put the material into the stratosphere. The, the uh, gray here shows model calculations that were done for the last IPCC assessment, uh, the last international assessment, 23 models around the world. And basically, what's happening with the observations is that they're, they're, they're following right with the models, or the models are basically following what, what you would expect uh, the observations to have shown, and uh, the observations are kind of right in the more recent observations are right in the middle of that, uh, those projections. Now, we don't, this shows the, the changes over the planet from 1900 to 2009. We, we find significant warming over most of the planet, not everywhere, nor do we expect it to be the same everywhere, or do we expect that every place is gonna warm. Some places may even cool slightly for a while. But the largest warming occurs over land masses and the largest amount at high latitudes. And there's good scientific reasons for that that I won't have time to go into right now. We can go back further in time beyond that, that 1850 time period 
by using proxies for temperature. They use uh, um, ice cores, uh, very careful analyses of the bubbles trapped in ice cores, looking at isotopes that are trapped in those. Uh, you can use tree rings, you can use a whole variety of other things that I won't have time to talk about. The latest analysis from the Proceeding of the National Academy of Sciences in 2008 uh, by Manadol goes back to uh, the time of Christ, basically the, the uh, uh, 2,000 years ago. And what you see with the observations in, in temperature, which are indicated in red that I showed you previously, what we've seen the last 40 years is much higher than the changes in temperature over those previous time periods. This is for the Northern Hemisphere because that's where we can do those kind of analyses best. Um, and this last decade is now thought to have been the warmest decade in 2,000 years and perhaps longer because we, we just can't carry this analysis back longer. Of course, the, the, these uh, proxies get more and more uncertain as we go back in time, so there are more uncertainties at the earlier period. But nonetheless, if we look at these temperatures, you can see the, the little ice age in the 17, uh, 1600, 1700 year time period um, that affected uh, Europe and, and, and North America. Uh, you can see the 400 year time period in the medieval warm period when the Vikings were in Greenland. And those, you know, much longer time period than, than, than just the, the last 40 years. But the amount of warming that was occurring was overall for the, uh, for the planet was much less than the kind of warming we're seeing happening right now at a much faster rate. Now, there's many, many indicators we have that the climate is changing, not just temperature. Uh, sea level is rising. It's risen about eight inches almost in the, in the last century. Um, we've seen changes in precipitation. The graph here shows the uh, change in precipitation we've seen in North America over the last 50 years uh, of the very largest events. We've seen a 30% increase in the, uh, uh, in, in the Midwest in terms of large precipitation. Over 90% of the glaciers in the world are, re are retreating rapidly. Many have disappeared already. Uh, Thermofrost is, is melting in, in Alaska and at higher latitudes, on and on and on. Um, and I won't have time to really talk about all this. Well, we admit there's many natural forcings for this. The sun, of course, is a major driver of our climate system, and variations of it are very important. As I'll show you very shortly, the satellite and other evidence we have over the last 40 years indicates that if anything, the solar output has actually decreased slightly, not increased. So it can't explain the warming we have seen. Uh, we also know every 100,000 years is a major um, uh, ice age, and we understand that those start because of what's called the Milankovitch theory, the, 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 the rotation of the, or the, the, the Earth's uh, uh, cycles around the sun, its pathways around the sun, and that leads to the Earth eventually being further away from the sun, that initiates uh, a major climate change, which is then substantiated by resulting impacts in the carbon cycle and effects on these greenhouse gases I mentioned. I won't have time to talk about some of these other things, but I do want to get to the fact that the um, big concern that we have is the fact that the humans are increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This has been well measured. It's actually the initial very accurate measurements were actually started by an Illinois graduate, uh, Dave Keeling, um, and from our chemistry department. And he uh, developed this instrument that allowed us to understand that in fact CO2 was, was changing by a large amount. This had been project, predicted to occur, have occurred sometime before that, but we weren't able to measure it until he started doing these very accurate measurements in 1957. This is just one of the series of measurements. This one happens to be from Mauna Loa Observatory, where they try to find places where you're not being affected directly by human activities and local activities. Well, the reason this is so important is what's called the greenhouse effect. 1824, Fourier, a very famous mathematician and scientist, um, discovered what's called the greenhouse effect. And that's that, that um, the, the solar output 
uh, largely penetrates through the atmosphere. There's some that gets reflected by clouds, some gets reflected and absorbed and reflected by gases, but most of it penetrates the Earth's surface. It gets absorbed there and re-emits in the infrared wavelengths. Certain gases, water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and a number of others can absorb in those wavelengths. And because of the existence of those gases in the atmosphere, and by the way, it's not just water vapor like some of the den denialists or confusionists will claim, um, this planet is livable. Without the greenhouse effect, this planet would be covered with ice and we wouldn't have life as we know it. What we're doing through, so, so it's kind of like having a blanket over the earth. I mean, it's, it's kind of that, that symbol. Um, and it, it allows the planet to be warm enough for life. What we're doing by increasing the amount of carbon dioxide, methane, and, and so forth, is we're adding an extra blanket to the Earth, and that's causing a, a, a warming. Uh, and it's it it fully what we expect. We have many, many indicators that the climate is changing because of human activities. I won't have time to go into all these different things. I do have a plot here that just shows the measurements of the solar output in the 11-year sunspot cycle over the last uh, three sunspot cycles, the last 33 years, since 1978, when we have very accurate satellite measurements. And it shows that the sun basically has decreased slightly in terms of its output. One analysis I can show you is a comparison of that observed temperature record, which is in the black here, analyses from, a, from, from all these complex models of the climate system that uh, they actually do a pretty good job of representing what the Earth's climate looks like. Um, they're not perfect, but they, they, they really do a pretty good job. If we do put in those models only the natural variations over the last century plus, we find that the model does a pretty, models do a pretty good job of, of projecting the temperature, predicting the past temperature, um, up till about 1965 or so. And that's the blue. After that, the models would say that temperature should actually have decreased. Now, the actuality is that if you, the temperature is much higher than that since then, and the only way to explain that is the red line, which is the models that also include those human-driven increased changes in CO2. Now, um, I'm gonna have to go very, very rapidly. We can go back 800,000 years and look at CO2 and temperature uh, based on ice cores, and the current amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is much higher than any time in the, in, the, in the past. And in addition, the projections for the future suggest that we'll have very significant changes in temperature over this century. Uh, and again, we're just focusing on temperature here. But in addition to that, we expect changes in precipitation and changes in, in very large um, extreme events and a number of other things. This shows an analysis way of showing climate change that I developed some years ago. The basic it's migrating state. What is the climate of Illinois in the summer likely to be uh, within uh, the, uh, by, by the end of the century? And for a high scenario, it, we, it's more like eastern Texas. Well, that's a very different climate than we have here. Um, I mentioned the extreme events. I won't have time to go in that. These changes in climate would cause many different changes in, in our uh, 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 many human and, and natural systems. Um, uh, economists have concluded that the benefits of strong early action on climate change outweigh the cost. We need to be considering this very strongly. I won't have time to go into some of the other myths here, but there are ways of solving this, and um, I'd be happy to talk to anyone who wants to know more. Thank you. Thank you.